So I will begin with explaining what MOSFETs are. Magnetic Oxide Surface Field Effect Transistors and the reason why we're interested in using these for our digital logic course is because of the way they operate based on voltage as opposed to like bipolar junction transistors aka BJTs that operate on current. So these are the two types that we'll be using. N channel and then P channel. And here's what each channel looks like, so to speak. That's a little exaggerated. And now finally the P channel, put a little dot and then draw the rest. And I'll briefly describe how each of these works. So, imagine if you have a uh, current of 5 volts going down here, and another, this is your um, deciding factor, voltage is right here. So, I'll show you how these work as far as the logic. So, <clears throat> if the voltage here is positive, or should I say 5 volts, then the, then the 5 volts will be transmitted down here. And note that the voltage from here does not come into any contact with here, meaning that the voltage does not go into here. The only voltage that goes down here, the output, is the input for 5 volts here. And when the voltage here is zero, or logic off, the, cur the uh, current will not flow and for the P channel, it is completely the opposite. So we have again 5 volts. And when the, cur when the uh, voltage here is logic on, or 5 volts, then the current will not flow, as opposed to with being 0 volt logic off, where the current will flow. So it's really the opposite of the N channel. So now I'll begin how to use these for making logic gates, the most fundamental type. So let's start with the inverter, where the logic gate will normally look like this. <coughs> you may be familiar with this, you may be not, but that's what the uh, circuit diagram of an inverter looks like. So now let's make these using the N channel and the P channel transistors. So. Suppose we have one N channel and one P channel. Now the puzzle here is to figure out, oops, forgot dot there. The puzzle is to forget, oh uh, no. How do we connect these so that it'll make the correct logic gate? And I'll try my best to describe how to do this, but for the inverter, let's just memorize how to do it because it's fairly simple. So, we have our output here, so let's tie these to our output. Let's tie this to ground, aka voltage is zero, always will be. And let's hook this up <coughs> to five volts. <coughs> and now, we have to do, hook up our deciding factor voltage, our logic voltage. So let's do that. Yes, the deciding vo voltage goes to both inputs. Well, I'm sorry, not inputs, but logic inputs of each transistor. So let's see if this actually works. So suppose this is 1, and I'll be using this notation for the rest of the logic gate, so it's like logic on or say zero logic off. So suppose this is one for now. So this is one. Therefore the current will be allowed to go through here and this will be high. But now let's check this. Since this is one, the current will not be flowing 
through here as this is the opposite of uh, the uh, end channel. So therefore, this is closed off and this is open, thus 5 volts flowing through here. Now let's try it the other way around, zero. Hmm. Wait, this is supposed to be an inver, not the other way around. I'm sorry, I think I hooked this up wrong. So now, this is going to be one. <coughs> yeah, I'm sorry, my apologies, I hooked this up wrong. So this is supposed to, this is where the uh, P channel is supposed to be, this is where the N channel is supposed to be. So now it acts like an inverter, where 1 will close off the 5 volts and will open the circuit to ground. So therefore it will be 0, and then once this will be logic 0, this will be on, and this will be off, so therefore this will become 5 volts. Once again, I'm sorry. So now let's explore using NAND gates, AND gates, and those kind of logic gates. Now assuming you have already known what these logic gates are, I'll go on. So let's make a two input NAND gate. So, and you'll be given the amount of transistors for this course. So, we'll suppose we have two P channels. <coughs> and two end channels and as an easy way to remember where these go these go to ground and these go to your um, input voltage once again I'm sorry that I messed this up so now this is going to be the uh, one of the trickier parts is to figure out how to hook these up to make a uh, full-on logic gate as opposed to a uh, inverter. So, we shall begin by having 5 volts down here. Uh, we will put this as like a arrow and a dot. And we'll have our ground here. So we'll have, you'll be given, you'll be essentially given these and it's your job to configure how these will connect. So, let's begin by wiring this one. And we gotta think about the logic here. So, for example, if you want this, if we want... I'm sorry, let me reword myself. The output should be on, and this is gonna be for a NAND gate. And so let's quickly write the truth table as it makes this process a little bit easier. And this will be the output. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. <coughs> and it's NAND, so therefore 0, 1, 1, 1, completely the opposite of a regular AND gate. And that's another thing to notice is that whenever you're doing like an AND gate or an OR gate, you will be adding an inverter as the uh, these regular MOSFET drawings will only be simplified for the NAND gate as opposed to if you want to do an AND gate you got to add this circuit at the end. But I'll get into that later. So, we want the output to be 1 when either one of these is 0. So, we want to make the, and you'll be figuring, noticing a pattern so I'll just give it away immediately. Each of these will be parallel or in series, and I'll show you what I mean just in a second. So, since we, since the only one at zero is one one, which means zero will be led from ground, you're gonna want the, you're gonna want this one to be in a logic chain, which meaning that the output will go to the input of this one, and the output will be ground, or the connection will be ground. So, we will have our output line, 
and now we will connect these as in, as in parallel and this will be connected for this series now we have to do, figure out where the A and B goes we'll simply put each one each logic input is its own variable so now let's give this a shot and test it out for zero and zero this will be zero and this will be zero thus current will be throwing flowing for through uh, both of these and output will be five volts now now these are zero so ground is completely blocked off therefore the output is five volts logic on one and for zero and one this is blocked off but this is on, so this is going to be automatically 5 volts and ground is still blocked off which therefore gives out again logic on same effect for this one now for this one both of these are blocked off so this does not have 5 volts however these are both 1 so therefore these are hooked up to ground and the output is 0 now you're going to probably ask well why don't you need these and just, you could just use the P channels. Well, for one thing, you need the ground to make sure the output is zero. And this is a question I've been asking when I was in this class as well. And um, I kind of figured it out for myself. And actually, there are some logic gates called open drain NAND gates, which I'll go over in another video, that only involve these channels that are hooked up to ground. As in the uh, 5 volts is hooked up into the outside, but once again, I'll go over that in a, some other video. And um, you need both because you definitely want the input to be zero or ground, or you definitely want the output to be 5 volts. Because without this, you're not sure if it's zero or not. You have to make sure that it is zero. Next, I'll be going over the NOR gate and you'll see the recognizable pattern that will follow. So again, you're given the same choices, same transistors, okay, we'll have our same common line. And then we'll do the same thing as hooking these up to the logic inputs. 5 volts. Ground. Alright, so let's go over the logic table for the NOR gate. So for NOR, it will basically be 1, 0, 0, 0. Because a regular OR gate, these would be 1, this will be 0. So it's just, once again, the opposite. So now let's figure out how to make this using the uh, transistors. So, let's focus on this one. The, the lone, the loner, as I call, like to call it. And now you'll figure out that this will be the uh, chain that we need as opposed to this one. We have the uh, completely the opposite. So this is going to be our series set. So this will be hooked up here. And then finally we have our parallel configuration for the ground. So now let's give this a quick shot and see if it works. So now, 0 and 0, 0 and 0, therefore like, the these gates are actually open, 5 volts will be flowing through here and give us a logic on, and the A and B are closed off, thus it won't have any ground. And for the other ones with the 1, 1, 1, 1, 
Either of these will be open and lean to ground, so this will be definitely zero, and these will be closed off for all three of these. So therefore, our logic gate works. Now, I won't be going over the uh, AND gate, because you're just going over the, uh, you're just basically doing the NAND circuit again, but adding that inverter. But I'll go over the NOR gate, and so you guys can see how you can make one. So instead of the two basic 2-2, two, two, you're given a set of three each of, I'm sorry, you're given three of each type of transistor. So now we have three instead of two. So we'll do exactly the same connections. And notice I'm not drawing the line here, and you'll see why just in a second. So now we have again, oops. Our uh, NOR gate, but we don't want a NOR gate, we want an OR gate. So, therefore, we just add the inverter and we'll be good to go. So, this is again going to be 5 volts, and also you may want to draw the same line from here to here, it doesn't matter, it's 5 volts and 5 volts. So, um, you just, it's your decision to do that. Okay. And now we finally have our output. So let's just try zero, zero, and one. So we know we already tested that this is one. So let's see if this inverter works properly. That is, if I drew it correctly. So this is going to be a one. So that means this will be closed and this will be on. So this will be a zero. So that officially works now. Let's try 1 and 1 for this one. So now we know that 1, 1, 1, 1 will be officially 0 because this is from the ground. And then we put it through the inverter. This will be on, this will be off, and this will be 1. And we, in, if you test these out further, you'll see that all three of these will be 1, and this will become 0 for the OR, so it works. Okay, thank you very much for watching.